Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Naya Giant Tribal deck. It's definitely not the most competitive deck ever, but it's a lot of fun to play, so let's dive right into it here. So what's the payoff for playing all these giants? Well, of course, it's a Realm Cloak Giant, which with the cast of Adventure can destroy all non-giant creatures. We also get a scary animation to go with it. And afterwards, it gives us a 7-mana 7 7-7 seven, seven with Vigilance. So very powerful card. And then most of the other giants in this deck are quite playable by themselves. We've got uh, at 2-mana the Adventure from Bonecrusher Giant, which lets us stomp to deal 2 damage to any target. And then afterwards we get a 3-mana 4-3. We've got Beanstalk Giant to help us ramp since we are a ramp deck. So with the adventure we get to search a basic land to put on the battlefield untapped. And then afterwards Beanstalk Giant is a 7 mana creature with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control. And then we also have Sunder Shaman which is probably the more questionable inclusion in the deck. But it's still a decent card for mana for a 5-5 that can be blocked by more than one creature. And whenever Sunder Shaman deals combat damage to a player we can destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. And there's quite a few artifacts and enchantments worth killing, food tokens of course, as artifacts, and then a couple enchantments worth killing, like Cavalcade of Calamity versus the red decks. And uh, otherwise we just want the additional pressure that the Sunder Shaman can provide, so that by the time we set up our one-sided sweeper, we still have a couple of creatures that can attack right away, maybe finish off a Planeswalker, since our deck can struggle against Planeswalker specifically. And then of course we've got our playset of a Realm Cloak to Giant, then uh, to help us ramp and get to 7 mana in the first place, we've got the help of Arboreal Grazer as a 1 mana 03 with reach, enters the battlefield, puts a land from our hand onto the battlefield. So just helps us ramp from 1 mana to 3 mana, where we can maybe set up a Beanstalk Giant. Then we also have a Once Upon a Time, which is great in this deck, since it both helps us fix our mana early, as well as find more action, and most of the payoff cards in this deck are creatures. We can even find a Beanstalk Giant early, so it can even find some ramp spells in creature form, which is great. Then we also have two copies of Prison Realm to help us deal with opposing Planeswalkers, which otherwise are pretty difficult for us to handle, and especially Oko being able to turn our Giants into elk creatures is uh, pretty annoying, so having a clean answer is nice. Then uh, to help us ramp we've got four copies of Circuitous Roots which can search up two basics and as you'll see our mana base has plenty of basic lands for us to search up between the Root and Beanstalk Giant. And then potentially the best card in the deck is Escape to the Wilds and this is our big card draw engine in the deck. So for five mana we get to exile the top five cards of our library. We can play cards exile this way until the end of our next turn and we also get to play an additional land this turn so it even helps us ramp. So even if we exile three lands with Escape to the Wilds we can still play all of them by playing two in the turn that we play Escape and then one more on the following turn. So we usually don't want to play it when we have 5 mana, but we want to wait until we have a couple extra lands so we can make sure we can get as much value from the escape as possible and cast every single card we can exile. And part of what makes that possible as well is that we have so many adventure creatures. So a card like Beanstalk Giant costs 7 mana if we want to cast a creature, but if we reveal Beanstalk Giant with an escape to the wilds, we can simply cast the adventure Fertile Footsteps for 3 mana, essentially 2 mana since the land comes into play untapped, and then at a later point we can cast a creature half without having to worry about the Beanstalk Giant going away. So that also makes the escape so good in this deck is that we can still cast all these cheap adventures and then later still get the creature half of the card so nothing goes to waste. So escape is often just 5 mana to draw 5 cards and play additional lands which is just a great card of course. And then looking at our mana base we've got 15 basic lands that we can search up between the root, the giant and our four copies of Fabled Passage. The only other dual lands in the deck are four Temple of Triumph. Since we're usually not doing a whole lot in the early turns so having a temple to scry one and set up our draw steps is nice. And then also four copies of Stomping Ground since at the core we are a red green deck. With uh, just a little bit of white so we only have the two basic planes since uh, Sunder Shaman of course doesn't really work all that well with basic planes but we still need the two planes to search up enough white mana to cast the cast off from a Realm Cloak Giant, which is uh, pretty important in a lot of matchups. And then five mountains, eight forests. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Sounds pretty good. Nice. 
not sure about the sequencing here, like if their turn one plays a tap land, might as well wait on once upon a time. Uh, sure. With double escape, I just want to hit my land drops, basically. Because while escape to the wilds costs 5 mana, ideally you play it with a couple extra lands in play. To make it more likely so that you can empty your hand afterwards. Yeah, Once Upon a Time feels like one of the most uh, often misused cards in standard at the moment. So I'm not in a hurry to cast this uh, sweeper here. Can just keep ramping and kind of set up. So we want to root first and then play temple. Doesn't really matter what it gets. What about Prison Realm? What does Prison Realm Exile that casts out doesn't destroy? An opposing giant, I guess. In this matchup, I just want to keep developing my mana and then at some point just swipe a bunch of zombies while attacking with a big giant that's already in play. I guess if they steal a giant with an Agent of Treachery, I might want to exile it because then I c it doesn't die to the giant, of course. It's close. I think I'm gonna bottom it. So let's see here. Can we escape and then still wipe the board here? I think we're gonna be a mana short. Do I need to Realm Cloaked right now? I think I do. So yeah, just gonna have to spend my entire turn on it, sadly. Can't really let my opponent activate Golos. But yeah, ideally we have something in play Another Golos is unfortunate. But now I could potentially escape, find another Realm Cloaked and swipe the board. So we'll start by escaping. Don't want to play my land yet in case of an Arboreal Grazer. Maybe that changes how we play this. And I want to make sure to keep up double white so I can uh, cast out. So this seems fine. Alright, we found a lance we needed. So I'll play the lance from exile first. Alright, well, we dealt with uh, two Golos, but there's triple Feel of the Dead in place, so that's an issue, of course. Bone Crusher, so we've got a lot of options. How much mana do I have in play? 4, 7, 8, 9, 10. Can make that 11. So these are already used. This one I haven't used yet.
All right, so we use every bit of uh, value from Escape to the Wilds. All these giants are in exile, so at some point I can start casting them. And I have another Escape to the Wilds. It's a ferry down. Make some more zombies. And make some more zombies. Alright, probably gonna need another Realm Cloak Giant here. Clean up on aisle 4, as they say. Playing a bunch of blockers here is not gonna be enough. Opponent just has too many zombies, so let's uh, escape. And that's not it. Now I could still once upon a time and find it. So we'll start there. Alright, there we go. So I can play Temple for the Scry. Three. Oh no, never mind. I can actually Beanstalk first here. If I still have any basic lefts. Which I do. Hit for four. Well, we've uh, gone through a triple Realm Cloak Giant and we needed every single one. Sorry, I'm late. I've got We've got a bunch of stuff Waiting in exile here. So Roots uh, can fetch the last two lands in our deck. Don't think that's going to be necessary. Want to start just casting some creatures here. Yeah, all of these are used except for the Bone Crusher, and then I have a Temple of Triumph as well. I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 mana. I can make that 16. So I think I should probably kill the fairy over a zombie. Since it's going to be hard to reach the ferry otherwise. Only time will tell. And I'm going to play the Vigilant ones that can attack and play defense at the same time. Did I miscount? Oh, I guess I don't have enough white mana. Alright, Beanstalk it is then. Yeah, I could have gotten a planes earlier. Maybe I should have. So I could double a Realm Cloaked in the same turn. Well, we're fighting the good fight, but it's not easy. Not a Realm Cloak definitely helps. So yeah, what I want to set up now is to have my Beanstalk Giants in play and then wipe the board once again with Realm Cloak to set up a lethal attack. And of course, make sure I don't die in the process. So that should work out here. I can play double Beanstalk Giants. So let's Beanstalk it up. No attacks. And hope we can win next turn and they didn't top deck a sweeper. Of course, their own Realm Cloak Giants not going to do it. It's got to be a time wipe. Fourth Field of the Dead, be my guest. And uh, now it's time to attack. Can search up two lands first if we want to, for value. And uh, yeah, the not-so-gentle giants managed to defeat the evil Golos deck. And so yeah, this could be okay. Do need to draw one more land for the sand to really work out, but uh, gotta have faith. Uh, Monorets. So 
So what do I want to kill with this Bone Crusher Giants? Anything in particular? Spitter's fine. They could be on the like Experimental Frenzy Monorad deck, in which case I want to keep Bone Crusher for Steamkin, but more likely they are on the Cavalcade deck, in which case Spitter is a fine target. Yep, there's a cavalcade. I guess these two are fine. Legion Warboss is a scary card. I can root plus giant if I take two, which might be worth it here, just have a blocker for the Warboss. And what I really want to draw here is one of my uh, Escape to the Wilds. Now that I built up my mana, it's pretty important to uh, find some action. It's mostly Escape to the Wilds that's uh, been very impressive when playing this. So hopefully once Field of the Dead goes, then uh, Ramp decks get to explore Escape to the Wilds a little bit more. Because the card is very fun to play with. Finds a shock, but luckily they can't cast it. Well, we're in a bit of trouble. Gotta get my grazer value though. So, escape to the wilds or bust. And cavalcade is not a great matchup, as they get to keep their enchantment around even post sweeper. Especially the combination of cavalcade plus Chandra is tough to deal with. We do have four uh, Sunder Shamans that can destroy the Cavalcade, so those are one of our better cards. It's a lot of damages. I guess we know about the Shock, so I shouldn't block the first Striker. But yeah, I think we're pretty dead to rights here. Yeah, Arboreal Gracer is an honorary giant. Alright, we didn't draw the escape. GG's. Yeah, I guess we can try. Once upon a time finds an untapped green source, so I get to play Grazer into Temple. Turn three roots. No untapped green source, sadly. I guess I can still grab Beanstalk Giants. And then just fetch up a forest here. I'll just do it now. Alright, Healer's Hawk. Don't mind seeing that. Stomping Ground, do we want that? Not really. I'm looking for an Escape to the Wilds. Maybe a, a Realm Cloak Giant. Uh, blue white flyers, I see. 
Well, Gracer does a good job for now, and then I'll need to find a cast off to wipe the board. Alright, there's the escape. So if I draw land, I can Beanstalk into escape. Not a root instead. I guess I can roots. I can Beanstalk into roots. And then save the escape one more turn. What I don't want to see is Sephara making their team indestructible, but that's probably what's going to happen here, is my guess. So now I'm going to need two Realm Cloak Giants or a Prison Realm. So yeah, it's not looking good now. This seems fine. Alright, there's the first cast off that's just to deal with Sephara. Sadly, the Gracer is gone. Let's see, am I dead to a Rally of Wings? Not quite. Oh boy, is this another Sephara? It looks like it. That's unfortunate. Two Sephara's in a row. Yeah, you can see, like, uh, how if they don't have the Sephara, then... Ooh, and never mind. Venerated Loxodon. Yeah, without Sephara, a single cast of is basically game over. Ooh, I guess we're still dead here. Alright, that was cool. Opponent with uh, Loxodon plus Rally of Wings. That's kind of nice. Untap your creatures too after convoking onto them. That's a pretty unique interaction. Don't think we can keep a two lander. Don't even know if I'm supposed to play turn one here and take two. Let's try this. And then next turn I can sack Fabled Passage, play Grazer. So, not actually sure yet if I'm supposed to get a Plains or a Forest here. I guess I can wait. Like if I draw land for the Sunder Shaman, then this comes into play untapped. So I don't really have to fetch now. Unless I need to Prison Realm the Goose, which I don't think I do. Alright, so I could still Prison Realm anyway, but now I'm probably just going to get a Forest. So... Doesn't matter that this is untapped if I'm going to get a Forest, so I might as well fetch first so I don't mess up the Scry. And I don't mind land 5 for escape here. I might still play Sun or Shaman first, we'll see. Alright, opponent's going deep. Is this maybe the Teamer Super Friends deck? Well, our deck's not great against Planeswalkers, and their deck probably has a lot of them. But we do have a Prison Realm in hand, at least. Oko in general is actually decent against us, since they can just 
turn my seven mana giants into three three elks, which doesn't feel great. So yeah, I think I'm kind of priced into prison realming Oko. And I'll probably still keep a land on top for escape. Again, I'm not really in a hurry to cast this Escape to the Wilds. I think I'm okay playing Sunner Shaman first. So, what are we hoping to find with Escape? A couple Beanstalk Giants. Maybe a uh, Realm Cloak Giant to clean up all these creatures. And then the Sunner Shaman also gets a clean attack onto a Planeswalker. Opponent looking for Sarkon. Focus on what matters. Another escape's not bad. Maybe should have kept up stomping ground actually. Bone crushers, okay, not amazing. Can probably do better. We found our sweeper. If I attack, my opponent's just gonna chump since they know this is incoming. So might as well stay back to prevent two damage. So what do they have in the graveyard? Not much. If they attack with the 2-2 two -two tokens, I don't think I want to block with Sunder Shaman in case they get back Lava Coil with Tamyo. Or if they have another Lava Coil in hand. So yeah, that's what my opponent's trying here. But we're not going to fall for it. Yeah, that is true. Realm Cloaked, clearing boards, and then Bone Crusher could have finished off Tamyo. So yeah, Bone Crusher could have been okay. Start with Once Upon a Time. Kind of like Beanstalk. and can uh, make some more food on the way out. And do I kill Kazmina in case of a Sarkon? Or do I just uh, hit Tamyo so they can't minus? What would they be getting back? Wicked Wolf is pretty good with all the foods. I think I will attack Tamyo. Subject is easily agitated. And then we've got another escape at the ready, which is nice. So we're doing okay this game, but of course, Planeswalkers are scary cards that we're not very good at uh, handling. So, game's far from over. Are we still looking for Sarkon? Oko, alright, yep. Yeah. That's definitely a good one. Chandra Acolyte of Flame as well. 
And a questing beast. So another Realm Cloak Giant would be ideal here. And I guess I could either escape or once upon a time to try and find it. Could also play the temple first to increase my chances of finding it in the first place, which makes sense because if I escape I can still Realm Cloaked afterwards if I find it. So yeah, let's temple first. And yeah, there it is. That'll do it. Now I sadly didn't find any lands with this uh, escape, so I might not be able to cast all the spells before they go away. Wicked Wolf is very good here. Don't have another Prison Realm lined up, so that's gonna stop my Giants for a while. So all that casting Realm Cloak Giant does is force them to sack a food, which could be relevant, of course. But I do want to ramp as much as possible, I think, so... I think I'll go for Root, Beanstalk... And then I guess I can still Once Upon a Time... Doesn't matter too much what I get. So I can't kill Kazmina. Yeah, it costs uh, two more. So we'll just Beanstalk again. Alright, so my mana's nicely developed. I will lose one of these Realm Cloak Giants. But then I'll have a nice supply of Beanstalk Giants. To hopefully take over the game. Gotta hope to dodge Oko. Sayili's pretty good too. Let's see how you work. So next turn I should be able to double Beanstalk Giants. Could also be dead if my opponent draws Sarkon next turn. Oh nice, turning a food into a wolf. It's uh, pretty effective. Sunder Shaman. Alright, so we've got a lot of options. I'm definitely playing one Beanstalk Giant, I think. I guess it's debatable between Realm Cloaked and Beanstalk, since Realm Cloaked's Vigilance might be more important than the extra power. And then I would like to kill Kazmina, so Sarkon only turns Sahil into a dragon instead of both. And then getting Sunder Shaman in play would be kind of nice, but I guess it doesn't line up great against Wicked Wolf. So yeah, I guess I can do both here. I would have preferred to get these beanstalks in play to apply a bit more pressure, but I think this is most likely to keep me alive, especially in the face of a Sarkon. Grazer, sure. Alright, so our opponent's kind of on empty. And my vigilant Realm Cloak Giant can do a good job of pressuring Sahili. Interesting. So if I force him to sack the food with a Wicked Wolf, then Realm Cloaked can kill it next turn, which might be worth it. So Realm Cloaked will go after Sahili, Sunder Shaman after my opponents. Yeah, 
Yeah, I could cast a Realm Cloak Giant now, force them to tap the wolf and kill Sahili. But I don't think Sahili is a huge problem if it stays in play for one turn, because even Sarkhan wouldn't kill me. Eh, interesting play from my opponents. Not blocking the Sunder Shaman here. And now I just want to get maximum power in play to kill them next turn. So double Beanstalk will do. So... And yeah, my opponent concedes. I guess they were even dead on board here since they can block one Beanstalk and still take more than 20. Alright, so that was a close game. Of course, if my opponent found a Sarkon at any point, we could have died to a bunch of Flying Planeswalkers. If they found Oko, they could have turned my Giants into Elks. And that would not have been great for me, but uh, we had just enough interaction with the Prison Realm and uh, Cast Off. And then we were eventually able to go over the top thanks to our ramp and especially Escape to the Wilds being a great uh, card advantage engine. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.